Hello and welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink and today I am going to review the Elements of Isla LG7 so um, I've had a review before of the um, another Elements of Isla um, the links up there if you have a look so the Elements of Isla are independent bottlers but they focus on you guessed it Isla whiskies this particular one is the seventh iteration of Lagavulin. Everyone's heard of Lagavulin. When you ask someone, oh, what kind of whiskey do you like? Oh, I like PT whiskeys. I like Lagavulin. You know, a lot of people will say that. So the LG7 is the seventh iteration of their Lagavulin range. Look, it's too hard for me to go back all the way to LG1 and try to find that because, I mean, they're very finite. I mean, you can't just go and buy the bottle off the shelf. This is 56.8% alcohol. This is Lagavulin. Everyone is very, very aware of what Lagavulin is. Isla Whiskey, very quintessential, um, sherry cask influence. Lagavulin 16 is everywhere in shops, everywhere in stores. This is a bourbon influence, um, Lagavulin, and it's always interesting to see what the taste is like in terms of the difference. Also, presumably a single barrel as well, or only a couple of barrels, which means that um, you're going to get a more bespoke, tailored um, experience with this. So it'll be like no other Lager Villain you've ever had. And if you like PT whiskies, I suggest you start looking at Elements of Islas because they will really expand your palate in terms of what an Isla can be that isn't homogenized into a 42 or 43% or 46% alcohol bottling. Um, which, when you bottle it like that, a lot of the character, character can go. And that's why these kind of independently bottled whiskies are always really good. So let's get nosing. And as usual, I've got my straight out of the bottle, straight uh, with, with a few drops. And I'd like to also thank Garth for lending me this bottle. Thank you, Garth. Garth um, is a tall fella with a hefty beard. And he actually looks like, is it Kratos from the God of War? That guy, like, yeah, he looks like Kratos. Anyway, let's nose. Mm, interesting. So I'm getting a little bit of, as much as, oh, obviously peat and everything will be the first thing you smell, but I'm getting some tannin in there, wood, wood tannins. Even though the color is so light, that's just what's beautiful about it. The color is light, but you're still getting those wood tannins. But I'm getting your quintessential Isla rubber, fresh rubber, bandage, with a hospital cleaner. Like that's a bit of an epidemic and people have just been spraying hospital cleaner around. And I'm getting a... Coffee, a bit of caramel. Lemon zest. Mmm, very pleasant complex nose. Not a heavy, heavy nose, but a complex nose nonetheless. The peat's not overpowering or anything, it's a bit of pine resin. It is quite a zesty nose for uh, Isla. Mm, I can nose this all day. There's a herbaceousness to it that I can't put my finger on. That's what I'm thinking about right now. But this might sound a little bit bizarre, but it has the tail end of tiger balm. <laughs> so the tail end of a tiger balm. I mean, this is like Chinese, Chinese herbal medicine in a glass right there. Let's try the sample with water. See what happens. A little earthiness comes through, the peats of size a little bit, the saltiness comes through a little bit. Toffee becomes more prominent, ginger, pine resin, citrus. Everything becomes a little bit more prominent except for the smoke and peat subsides a little bit. The thing about Isla and Lagavulin, there's always that bandage glue smell, that bandage glue, that bandage glucoplast, there's always that smell. Coconut, vanilla comes through a little bit more. That's a bourbon influence. With this one here, it wasn't quite coming through. I think it was a little bit too much alcohol. Delicious nose. Let's get tasting. Best part, the best part. Mm, that is outstanding. I'm getting 
lemon peel, grapefruit, citrus, ginger, a spice, a heat, maybe like a green capsicum, a green bell pepper spice to it. Slightly grassy, pine resin. Oh man, the lingering, lingering peat just permeates through the tongue. It's just, it's like you can just close your eyes beyond the beach and just be burning a bonfire by the beach right there. Salty. With a bit of smoke. Oh, a powerful dram. It's a pleasure, a pleasure. So different to your standard bottling of Lagavulin. I mean, you know, Lagavulin, it's not a bad whiskey. I don't mind it at all. But would I invade a small country for it? Would I destroy a small planet for it? No, I wouldn't. I mean, I'll go overseas and I know I'll get a Lagavulin 16 that tastes the same everywhere. I'll buy it. But I wouldn't seek it out. It's more of a backstop for me. But this is so different. It's so much more intense in flavor. It's what Lagavulin should be. It's not as sweet, more savory. Let's get tasting the water sample. Mm. So with the water sample, sweeter. The smoke is more subdued, but the resin and oil is more pronounced. The ginger and the pine resin is actually a little bit more subdued, which isn't strange because the nose it extenuates it, but the palate, it doesn't. There you go. Oh, definitely, definitely a, um, a green bell pepper, maybe even borderline jalapeno kind of heat that's, that builds. The oiliness stays in the mouth. I can't get rid of it. It is right there. Campfire smoke. Like a toasted, toasted caramelized coconut. A bit of toffee. That is excellent. Excellent. The mouthfeel is fantastic on that one. Oh, gorgeous. Outstanding. Getting a slight green apple. A green apple in the back. But the herbal... The herbal... The herbaceousness, I said, the herbal notes are quite prominent with both. Uh, if I have to pick a herb, you know what? I'm going to say licorice. There's a licorice-ness to it, and maybe a slight peppermint to it. It is very outstanding. I like it a lot. Would I buy it again? Yes, I would. Would I do immoral things for it? Maybe, maybe. Um, I do enjoy it. In terms of cigar pairings, because it is kind of... It is quite a robust whiskey. It is quite an overpowering whiskey. I'll go for a mild um, cigar with this one, just to balance it out. Once again, it is not something that I can sit on a whole evening. It's not a session whiskey, by all means, because it is very heavy, unless that's your inclination, then that's fair enough. But to me, I'd probably um, either, well, I'll probably finish off with this, actually, um, because once you've had it, lighter whiskeys might not actually translate to much taste. <laughs> It is quite a strong whiskey. Very enjoyable. Uh, you're looking at maybe about 80 to 100 US again for this, but you have to seek it out. It's not everyone's going to be selling the elements of Isla. It's going to be very hard to, um, well, not hard to, but it'll be generally hard to find elements of Isla. So it's not going to be something that you can just go, oh yeah, I'm going to find it. Yeah. Thank you for joining me today, and please hit subscribe. And um, please hit subscribe and ring that bell. If you've got any questions about the elements of Isla, or hey, look, if you just want to share your experience with me, please do. I'm really keen to hear it. Thank you very much, and um, cheers.